Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software. And on today's video, Real-Time Screenshots, I'm going to show you a new feature in version 10 that allows you to take screenshots, make note of those screenshots within your documents, and then retrieve them later after real time during editing. This allows you to take screenshots of things such as Zoom meetings so that you can get the correct spellings of attendee names, or things like exhibits that may be shared during remote sessions, or any other information that you'd like to capture an image of and refer to later after real time is over. In order to use real time screenshots, the first thing that we need to do is change a setting within Windows. I'm going to click Start. I'm going to go to Ease of Access Display Settings. And I'm going to scroll down choose Show Animations in Windows, and change that to Off. Once I've done that, I can move on to the next step. I'm going to download a program called Minicap. I'm going to click Download. I'll choose Save. I'll save this to my desktop, and I'll click Save again. Once it's done saving, I'm going to click Open to install it. I'll click Yes. Next, I'm going to change the installation location to just C Drive Minicap, and I'll click Next, Next, Next. I'll choose Install, Next once more. And you see that the program has been installed, so I can close it now that I'm sure that it's installed. I'm going to close the Minicap website. And now that I have Minicap installed, I can use it in real time to take screenshots of my screens. I'm going to open up Eclipse version 10. First, I need to make sure that the macros to take screenshots and access the screenshots are in place. So I'm going to go to Settings, Edit, Macros, and the screenshot macros should be at the very top of the list, preceded by a hyphen, just like the stutter macros. I don't see them here, so I'm going to click Import. I'm going to go to my Portable Macros folder, and I'm going to look for the file called Screen Capture Macros. You may also have a file called Screen Cap Macros. If you have that one, you could ignore it and just use Screen Capture instead. I'm going to select this one and hit OK. At the top of my list, I have Capture Screen 1, Capture Screen 2, and Find Screenshot. And the way these are used is that I can write a steno stroke to capture a screenshot of my first screen, a separate steno stroke to capture a screenshot of my second screen. And then the Find Screenshot macro can be used from the keyboard in editing to open and locate the screenshots that are referenced in the document. So what I'm going to do is assign a steno stroke to Capture Screen 1 and Capture Screen 2 by going to Edit, Dictionary Entry. I'm going to use Screen 1 for Capture Screen 1. and similar steno for capture screen two. However, for find screenshot, I'm going to hit speed keys and I'm going to associate a standard hotkey for that macro. So now I can use my steno stroke for screenshot one to take a screenshot of my primary screen and my steno stroke for screenshot two to take a screenshot of my secondary screen. After making sure that I have the macros in place and that they have steno strokes or a keyboard assignment in place, I need to make sure that two commands in Eclipse also have assignments already. I'm going to go to Settings, Edit, Keyboard, and in the Standard list with Standard selected at the top, I'm going to click Find, and I'm going to hit the F key until I get to Fortran. I'll select Fortran and press OK. And you see that I do in fact have a command assigned to Fortran. So that's perfect. I'm going to hit Find again. And I'll choose Internet Support after hitting the I key and I'll press OK. I have an option for both of these. So I'm ready to go. However, if for some reason you've utilized these keystrokes for other things and these default keystrokes are missing, you can click Add select Fortran, or 
Internet Support, and then choose Standard. And where it says Keystroke, click in this box, not on the drop down list, but just directly in the box, and then select a new keystroke that you aren't already using for these commands. And once you have both of these in your command list, then you're almost ready to use the macros. The last setting we need to change is one that will ensure there's a location for the screenshots to be saved into. I'm going to go to Programming, File Locations, and I don't already have a location that says Capture Equals, so I'm going to put my cursor at the end of an existing line and press Enter. And I'm going to type in Capture Equals, and I'm going to type in C colon flash Minicap, which is the same place that we installed Minicap to earlier. Once this is done, I'll press OK, and I'll press OK once more, and now I'm ready to start real time and actually use the macros. I'm going to start a real time file. I'm going to go ahead and write some steno to get some paragraphs entered in this document. Since the screenshot commands get entered as print commands, they will go between paragraphs in your document, and so that's important to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and write my steno to take a screenshot of my first screen. So I'm going to write screen one. And you see that a print command has been added indicating that a screenshot of this screen has been taken at the current date and the current time. And you see that this information matches the current information on my system clock. And so once I see that line, I know that my screenshot has been taken. And as I continue writing along, I can still see that screenshot command as long as I have print commands turned on. I'm going to continue writing. And now I'm going to take a screenshot of my other screen using screen two. So I'll write my steno screen two. And you see that the exact same thing has happened. I have a line indicating the name of the file as well as its location, which is my capture folder. And again, it's given a name with the date and time that the screenshot itself was created. If I continue writing again, since I do have print command shown, I can still see that print command line. Now, in order to view these screenshots during editing, you're going to have to use the last macro. I'm going to end translation. And I'm going to go ahead and move to the top of the document. And if I put my cursor here, I can now use the find screenshot macro to retrieve the screenshot. And again, if I go to settings, edit, macros, my find screenshot is listed at the top, and the keystroke I selected was Control Shift Alt X. So here I'm going to hit Control Shift Alt X. And you see that the screenshot has opened up of my first screen, and it was taken, and it has the contents of my screen at the time the screenshot was taken. If I close this image, I can move down in the document. I'm going to hit Control Shift Alt X once more. And you see that this time it opens the screenshot from my second monitor, which in this case had a Zoom meeting of which I was the only attendee. And so this is how you can use steno strokes to take easy, simple screenshots and insert them directly into your document at the relevant time. This way, if an exhibit is shown or a document is shown that you're going to have to get information from, you can quickly just take a screenshot of it and know that that information will be there for you to refer to later. And opening the screenshots is as simple as hitting the command that you've assigned to the find screenshot command. And again, if I go to settings, edit, macros, there are three total screenshot macros. The first two are to capture your first screen and your second screen, and you'll assign steno or voice steno strokes to these. And the last one is to open the screenshots, and you'll assign a keyboard command to this. Additionally, you may want to retrieve your screenshots directly outside of Eclipse. And if you need to do that, that's fine. There are two ways you can do this. I can go to File Manager. I can choose Capture. And all of my screenshots will be listed based on the date 
you see that I have screen 0308. And if I hit the plus sign next to that, each screenshot that I took on this day will be listed with the time. And I can choose a screenshot and hit open. And Eclipse will open that file for me. Additionally, I can go to the file manager, go to the capture folder and hit explore to open the minicap folder directly. And you see that both of the screenshots I took are here. And I can open these files or send these files if I need to. And additionally, if you need to access them without Eclipse at all, you can simply click on your yellow folder icon or go to start and then documents and then documents. And here go to this PC, C drive, and then minicap. And this is the same folder with the same contents. And so no matter what you need to do with these files, they're always accessible in Eclipse or out of Eclipse. Thank you for watching this video. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 seven. Tech support can be reached with any question, anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day.